Welcome back, you guys. This is Minister Ashley. I know it has been some time since I have done a spirit animal video. In this video, I will cover snakes and serpents, which are pretty much like the same thing, but you know, people call them by different names. So I will go over some bit of astrology, tarot symbolism, symbolism, history, metaphysical meanings, and dream interpretations. I have an entire playlist here dedicated to spirit animals so do go check that out and feel free to subscribe as well as leave a comment and give a, this video a thumbs up all of that helps the analytics to reach more individuals so I know that many people think that snakes and serpents they're associated with negative energy associated with evil they're cursed all of that but in this video I will dispel all of those myths so there is a aspect of the serpent energy that is quote-unquote negative which negative is nothing but feminine energy so the serpent the snake represents both masculine and feminine energy we can see this echoed with Ratu and Ketu which are this mythological creature is known as a snake and this snake represents both the south node and the north node and this story is a way of how to explain the eclipse season so you have one that represents the north node and then you have another one that represents the south node. And you can see that the south node is actually a symbol that is on the back of a cobra's head, sometimes depicted as a dragon without feet. So Rahu swallows the sun or the moon, depending whether it is a lunar or a solar eclipse. Snakes have been used throughout history to depict religious figures, to tell mythological stories, to convey symbolism and things that have happened throughout history. Serpents have been used to project fear and intimidation throughout religion, but when we tap into the other side of this spirit animal that we see that it really does mean rebirth, regeneration. So starting with in the Garden of Eden, now we do have more symbolism connected to the Tree of Life and also the tree of knowledge of good and evil and so with that serpents and snakes are connected to wisdom and also temptation many say many scholars say that the snake that was in the garden of eden was not indeed satan how most christians try to con make that connection however in the hebrew text it is a female serpent and Typically, Satan or the devil or Lucifer is connected to a masculine energy. So the feminine that is represented there in the Garden of Eden is some in some schools of belief. It is Lilith and Lilith has been connected to the owl as well as with the serpent. So I do have a video going over the owl spirit animal. You can check that video out in the Hebrew Bible. The word Nahas, hopefully I'm pronouncing it correctly, means snake that's associated with the word divination. I do have a video about girl with the python spirit that will be linked down below. It is also connected to the word Saroth, which is a angelic hierarchy, which means burn burning one or burning. This connection is also related to the Kundalini energy or either the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can be represented as a burning flame, a non-consumable flame, um, burning energy, uh, what they will call like the Holy Ghost or flaming tongues that move rapidly like a snake's tongue, like in the book of Acts also connected to also the pillar of fire that led the children of Israel with Moses through the desert land. This also connects the burning one to Satan, which also is connected to Lucifer. And Satan is sometimes just depicted as a serpent, as temptation, also known as the tempter. And Lucifer was an angel, actually God's favorite angel. And what happened is that he fell from heaven like a falling star. And when a falling star falls through the atmosphere from the heavens, it catches on fire as it falls to the earth. Lucifer translates as shining one, light bearer, or morning star. So the connection between the snake and the burning one and fire connected to Lucifer falling to the earth represents the downfall, represents the fallen star as the star falls through the atmosphere, it catches on fire. And when it hits the earth, it is extinguished. So that would be the symbolism of Satan, which is connected to the dark one or darkness. But when the curse was placed upon the serpent that once walked upright, and that upright position represents being man-like, being, having both angelic and human attributes and capabilities that when the serpent was cursed to crawl on its belly 
This reduced their mobility. Snakes also have poor eyesight, but this allows them to utilize their other senses. They can sense their environment using their tongue. Hence the scripture, the tongue has the power of life and death. While snakes typically are peaceful creatures, when tempted or provoked, they can lash out with a potentially deadly bite, just like words that can bruise the ego. The snake is to bite the man's heel, that that is symbolic of the Achilles heel, that mankind always has to experience some level of discomfort in this life. So when the serpent bites the man's heel, that is representation of the sting of death, the sting of, of existing in the physical body. It's also representation of the continual battle between our higher consciousness and our human nature. This life, we have to experience this life and our battle is to achieve a higher level of consciousness. In some beliefs, snakes are connected to rainbows as they are seen through different fractions of colors. With this belief, this is also connected to the tree of knowledge of good and evil and our chakra system. As the Kundalini rises through the chakra system, each chakra has a color that is associated with it. A video on rainbow symbolism. The symbolism between the snake crawling on its belly and another connection is that with that, snakes are more intuitive. Being that they crawl on their belly, that they are connected to the earth and they can feel the earth's vibrations. So they are sensitive to the movements and changes of the earth. In the Old Testament, Moses is prompted by Yahweh to have the people that were bitten by snakes towards a staff with a brass snake on it for healing. This represents both the snake's ability to poison and to harm, as well as its ability to heal. With this, the connection between Christ and snakes is evident. As Christ sacrificed his body to receive a new one, was able to resurrect and ascend. As snakes are connected to resurrection, rebirth, and ascension. Another connection is the fact that they shed their skin, which represents a rebirth. With rebirth, the Ouroboros is an ancient symbol that represents rebirth. It is strongly connected to the rat snake that has been known to, to eat its own tail. Much like the symbol that stems from ancient Egypt and Greece. Alchemically, this symbol represents unity of all things nature and spiritual, the eternal cycle of destruction connected to the swastika. And with the swastika, that also represents prosperity, rebirth, positivity, and healing. I have long shared the negative reputation along with women throughout history and the connection is stemming from the Garden of Eden as Eve is, is used as the scapegoat for both Adam and Eve's sin. The link between Eve and Lilith and the serpent is that of fertility as Eve became a mother later on as Eve is known as the great mother or the mother of all nations also connected with Sarah and sexual passion and desires and with sexual desires that's also connected to creativity like how the snake sheds its skin so does a woman shed the inner lining of her uterus every month a little bonus here with the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail has been connected to a woman's reproductive organs. If you could see the image on the screen, or either you could look it up if you're listening to the podcast, you will see that there are there's two snake-like objects that are curled up towards the cup. Like a womb, the Holy Grail is considered to be a sacred place. This cup of life has been connected to regeneration and the fountain of youth. And there's the connection with the Ankh. And symbolically, from a biblical standpoint, this represents the Holy Spirit, the Rahak Hokodash. Much like the misunderstood Lilith, Medusa is another character that is connected to the snake spirit animal. After being attacked in Athena's temple, she was cursed with having snakes for hair. In some schools of belief, they connect Nubian or melanated women to Medusa as her hair, her head full of snakes are likened to women with locks. From being cursed and ostracized, she was also hunted and eventually beheaded, all because of her appearance. Say this is the story of Nubian and melanated women that have been ostracized throughout history for the texture of their hair and their unique hairstyles. 
Venom in medicine has long been used for holistic healing in indigenous cultures. Connections between ashawaska are connected to snakes, although they may not be necessarily used in the ceremony. Some people have reported seeing the snake a week before partaking in the sacred ceremony. In ancient Egypt, the Urayus is a hooded cobra on the forehead of the pharaoh's sarcophagus. In here we have the vulture and the cobra that are located in the pharaoh's sarcophagus, right at the forehead, at the penile gland. The Urayus is a symbol for the goddess Wedjit. She is one of the earliest Egyptian deities and was often depicted as a cobra as she is a serpent goddess. I'm sure that there's more information out there, but to keep it moving with this topic, I'm not going to go into too much detail. With the lion and the serpent symbology, the lion is connected to the brave heart, while the snake is connected to the rebirth, the temptation connected also to Judas and the lion represents Christ. So Christ was able to overcome temptation when he was in the desert for 40 days, he overcame temptation. He also overcame the temptation on the cross. Once again, the analogy of the cross, which I will have to do a separate video about that symbolism of the cross and the unk. It symbolically represents that love can conquer all, even overcoming our greatest temptations and fleshly desires. The strength card, we have the lion. And over top of the maiden's head, you have another form or depiction of the Ouroboros, where it is looped in an affinity sign. In this case, it can represent the constant battle that goes on between man and their higher nature to overcome natural propensity towards self-destruction. As the Divine Feminine depicted in this tarot card tames the lion, the beast, the beast within us all. In Christianity, this symbol represents Christ, Christ connected to the lion, trampling over the snake, which represents the devil. Connection with the lion head and the serpent, that's where you have the head of the serpent as a lion. Known as Chenubius, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, I apologize about it. I did look it up and there were several different pronunciations. So this symbol is found on talismans, amulets and small pieces of jewelry that protect against disease, negativity, negative energy, and promotes longevity, health, and vitality. Soon to come, I will have a spirit animal video about the lion. The eagle and the serpent. So hence the eagle, the thunder god, fighting the snake, the sun's heat. So this is once again connected to astrology. Being that one part of the year contains hot, dry days, which is connected to April and May. And because of the cool and wet half of the year starts the mating of vultures, which is connected to October and November. And the April and May months are mating seasons for snakes. So the, the annual will is cut in half where you have the wet season and the dry season. October, November through about the beginning of April, that's the wet season. And from April, May, all the way to about the beginning of October is the dry season. And that is the mating season for the snakes, for snakes and serpents are beginning around April and May. And for the mating season of eagles, vultures, starts around October, November. So we can see that in nature that the eagle will swoop down on a snake and wrestle with it, but the eagle always wins. So this is symbolic of the wrestle between the seasons as the snake tries to, which is the sun's heat around summertime. It wants to hold on to the summer. The sun wants to have longer days, but the eagle always wins, which would, would bring about the colder months. Both the eagle and the serpent are symbols for the season of Scorpio. The first 10 degrees of Scorpio season is represented by the serpent. As the serpent crawls on its belly, it ascends to the eagle and then finally the phoenix where it catches on fire and it is reborn. So you have the snake, the eagle, phoenix, which is connected to the angel being able to go to the heavenly realms, atmosphere. 
atmosphere catching a flame and remembering the connection with Sarah from the Hebrew Bible. So here we can see the clear indication of awakening once again. We know about the mythology connected to the phoenix as the phoenix catches on fire it turns to ash and it starts all over again the ash the ashes reside on the earth and it therefore transforms into the snake and the snake regenerates itself and becomes an eagle a phoenix and the process starts all over again another connection between astrology and snakes is that the snake does represent Scorpio, and Scorpio rules the genital region that governs the reproductive organs. So snakes, they're connected to regeneration, rebirth, as so is Scorpio. The Orphic egg represents the union of opposites and symbolizes the creation and the beginning of the universe. Orphic means otherworldly and mysterious, as life and creation is a great mystery unto man. Snakes in tarot. I've already mentioned the strength card with the Ouroboros over top of the maiden's head, as well as on the magician's card in the same placement. Then we have the snake on the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and that is on the lover's card. Then we have the world card where we have the Ouroboros around the main figure in the middle and on the Will of Fortune card. Glypius and Moses are connected being that both of them carried a staff around with them for healing and Moses was known to heal his people with a healing staff known as Nehushtan found in Numbers 21.8. Sometimes depicted in the Star of Life, the rod of Asclepius is highlighted, much like the bronze snake on the staff or Christ hanging on the staff or a cross, that this is connected to healing. Similar to the intertwining snakes on the staff of Hermes, the Caduceus. The Caduceus is connected to the winged messenger Hermes, also known as Mercury who is the god of magic, communication, trickery, commerce, travel, diplomacy, and rhetoric. And with medicine, he is connected to pharmakia. And pharmakia translates as witchcraft. And this is where we get the word pharmacy from. You can check out two videos that I have breaking down the meaning of pharmakia. With the two snake symbols representing the left brain and the right brain, the material and the mind, the spiritual and the physical. And as the snakes climb the staff, this represents awakening, good and evil. You can see this depicted in art, specifically around the Garden of Eden. There are two snakes that intertwine on the tree, or you can even say the staff. The connection between the spinal columns, which contains 33 vertebrae, and the Christos oil, much like Jacob's Ladder, where the kundalini energy would rise from the bottom to the top, releasing a sacred serum known as the Christos oil that is connected to serpent energy. The statement as above, so below is the regeneration of this energy. You have life, death, rebirth, and ascension, and that cycle continues. One is able to replenish sacred Christos oil, known as colostrum oil, gives a new meaning to eternal life, so known as the sacred secretion and also sacred snake oil oil. When Christ was crucified in a location in Jerusalem called the Calvary, that word actually translates as skull. In the body, there's a nerve called the tree of life. It protrudes from the skull and that nerve is called the vagus nerve. That means crucify. That crucifies, also known as refines or transforms, the sacred secretion or the Christ oil in our penile gland causing us to see the face of God or causing us to have a euphoric experience. This is through the kundalini rising. This process is anointing, the anointing oil, the cup that runneth over. I'm going to first start off with a basic guide to dream interpretation regarding snakes. So basically, overall, snakes represent growth, renewal, and transformation. With that in mind, whenever you dream of a snake, knowing that everything leads to a transformation. To start, snake bites represent hidden fears and unresolved issues. Hissing snakes represent innate fears and poor intuition. Killing a snake represents overcoming difficulties. Poisonous snakes represent betrayal, lies, and deceit. 
Snakes in your house represents fights among family members. A dead snake represents renewal and rebirth. A black snake represents potential threat or a danger. A white snake represents balance. So I'm going to share one of my personal dreams that I've had about snake. So I had a dream about myself holding a cup of a clear cup of orange juice. It was a beginning of the dream. I don't really remember, but this part I do remember. I had a clear cup of orange juice. I looked inside of the cup. There were two black snakes swimming around in opposite directions. And I knew when I looked at it, I knew that it represented a health condition or something that needed to be healed. It needed to be seen being that the cup was clear and orange juice is very sweet. I knew that it had to do with with a health condition connected to not taking care of my my health and specifically surrounded around diet. Lo and behold, a couple months from there, then that's when I had to do a shift in my diet. The sugar intake was too high. And the snakes, they were going in two different directions that let me know that it, there was some level of disharmony. Dream interpretations, or like when you're awake and you may see snakes or symbols of snakes and what it may represent for you. First of all, you always want to make sure that you are paying attention to how the way you feel when you see those symbols. Sometimes it can be preconditioning, but the more that you become um, aligned with your inner tuition, the more that you will be able to tell if it is truly a divine message specifically for you. So that's number one. Number two, you want to pay attention to what is going on around you around the time that you either spot this symbol or you dream of or what's going on before the dream and what's going on within the dream. So with that, always knowing that whenever you dream of a snake that there is going to be some level of rebirth that is involved and that rebirth can cause things to break down so it could be something that is good that you want to break down or it could be something that you may may not be ready physically to let go of but trust and believe that your spirit guides are leading you to let go of it but being that you have some type of attachment to it that it may be a process that can be agitating. I wouldn't necessarily say painful, but it can be agitating. After you go through that process, you will feel relieved, much like how a snake sheds its skin. And during that process, it can be very agitating because you're you're shedding something old and you're revealing something new. So through that process, if you ever watched a snake shed its skin, that it, it does a lot of move, crawl, get out of that old shell that they have outgrown pretty much. But once they have done that, not only do they look refreshed as their skin looks better and healthier, but you can see the relief within the body of the snake. Now, snakes can represent, can, keyword, represent hidden agendas or enemies. This can be confirmed that in within the dream if the snake and it's hidden from your viewpoint you you cannot see it at all and as you're continuing to move closer that it jumps out or it startles you that's an indication that something will catch you off guard something unexpected you sneak if you see a snake climbing up a tree that means that you're going through a rebirth process that you have to have a higher viewpoint you have to allow yourself to go through this activation, go through this transformation. As you do, you will have new levels of interpretation be, that you will be crowned with wisdom. This also could represent a level of divine healing and gifts of healing. Like you'll be able to heal other people that could be through natural remedies or it could be through spoken word or even laying your hands or something dealing with your hands. Snakes are connected to medicine women. The form of healing could come through sexual healing and it could come through healing of trauma. So when you see a snake in your dream climbing up a tree, that this all could represent that. If you see a snake crawling on dirt, on dry earth, not sand, but dry earth, and not cracked earth, but just like dry earth, like regular dirt, so that you need to plant a seed and that seed is catered to you so it could be literally going to plant and, and start a garden you need to invest it's some something about investing you have to invest that could be you investing in real estate in stock market um, it's some form of a seed that you need to put in the dirt to 
allow it to grow, that you need to tend to it. Being that snakes are connected to the eighth house that deals with taxes and real estate, investment, stocks and stuff, that that could be a clear indication that you should go that avenue. You see a snake in your dream crawling on dry, cracked ground, that means that you sow your seed in the wrong spot or don't sow your seed in the wrong spot. That there could be a famine and what I mean by famine, it may be a dry spell in your finances. It may be a dry spell in your relationship, a dry spell in your connection with your, your spirit guides, your angels, your ancestors, whoever you know you may deal with. Lean on faith. Through you leaning on this faith that you will receive some level of spiritual enlightenment and it will be a tangible gift attached to it. If you see a snake crawling up a staff, a spine, or crawling on your back, there could be some alignment problems that could be in your spine that could be even in your hip specifically left in your dream if you see a snake crawling up your leg means you need to stay left leg means you need to stay put don't make any movement like if you were planning on to to like move or something or move a job or relocate that means for you to stay if you see in your dream that the snake is crawling up your right leg that means to go you see a snake in a rainbow or crawling up a, a rainbow or something colorful, pay attention to which color that the snake stops on or that they're crawling over top of. That could be indication of some stagnant energy in your alignments of your chakras. If you have a snake on your head and if the snake is coiled, there's something that you're missing. There's someone or something that you're missing. Like if it's a person, then you're missing some indica indications that they're sending out to you, like some signs, some signals, some messages that they're trying to send out to you without directly saying it. If the snake is on your head and just there, not moving, that means that you you have to send out some type of a message, like you're not making yourself clear when you are communicating with others. It could be a sign for you to stop talking so much and to listen more. If in your dream, you're asleep and you roll over and you see a snake in your bed while you're still asleep, like in your dream, that someone very close to you has hidden feelings for you. And those feelings, depending on the way how you feel within the dream, can be a negative or a positive thing. Well, I hope this video helped. Please share your thoughts. If you have any input, share this video, comment, like, check out our other spirit animal videos here on this channel and also any other any of our other videos all right i will talk to you guys later thank you so much for tuning in all right peace